Welcome to GCP Mindset Channel. Today's topic is Regulatory Authority Inspection in Clinical Trials, Part 3. When we will go now to have a look uh, into FDA uh, and the data available at uh, FDA, uh, again, all the data uh, are publicly shared. And uh, in the US, uh, there are more data shared uh, in comparison to EU uh, because uh, there are not, not such uh, strict restrictions in terms of data prediction. And for example, to have a list, a uh, department list of the investigators or uh, uh, additional details uh, shared. So this is just uh, the overview, uh, which is interesting fact because it's comparing uh, the number of findings uh, or percentage of the findings uh, comparison to the foreign and domestic inspections, uh, which is uh, proof that there are not a big uh, country specifics in terms of uh, doing the mistakes. However, uh, it should uh, be still in the focus uh, during uh, performing a country specific checks as well. Um, and uh, as an example of FDA uh, warning letter, as I have mentioned previously, after the inspection, if there are no satisfactory answers to FDA form, uh, then uh, the warning letter may be issued. And this is a real example when FDA issued the warning letter uh, to this investigator who failed to ensure that the investigation was conducted according to the investigational plan. And because there were no satisfactory answers uh, including the CAPA plan provided uh, back to FDA, the warning letter was issued and is publicly available. Uh, on the FDA uh, pages, uh, there are a data dashboard available, which is a very interesting tool where you can uh, filter, uh, for example, foreign and domestic inspections uh, based on the uh, year selected or country selected or also a type of inspection. And therefore, you can find uh, many data also uh, with respect to the findings. Uh, you can filter out uh, based on the findings. And as you can see, the trend uh, until 2021 was decreasing. However, we should also read this graph in, in um, uh, all together with uh, the known fact that also during the COVID era and the pandemics of uh, COVID-19, there were also less uh, inspections performed. So uh, let's see after the COVID era, how the inspection findings will also develop in future. In terms of product type, the majority uh, of uh, FDA inspections were performed for food and cosmetic. Uh, however, we are mostly interested in the biologics, devices or drugs. And um, afterwards, you can also filter out uh, based on, for example, of the company name. Uh, I have blinded the, this overview uh, just to provide you some, uh, some overview what you can find uh, was the, uh, for the data directly on web pages that you can find uh, each individual uh, report, including a description, uh, what was the finding and uh, how to uh, how it was addressed to uh, the audit team. And uh, if we were filtering, for example, for just our curiosity, uh, the details uh, regarding inspections in the Czech Republic compared to the inspections in Germany, uh, then uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, we can also see not only the numbers, of uh, inspections performed, uh, but also the same also for Germany, but also again, the findings grading and also the auditees or inspectees who have been audited by FDA. So this is also just for illustration of uh, what was uh, the uh, number of uh, issued uh, findings and the grading. And uh, it's uh, visible that from uh, in Germany from 2019, there were no critical findings anymore. And uh, for Czech Republic, there was only uh, one last critical finding in 2016. Uh, again, uh, another type of filter to uh, filter the data based on the product type. 
and again the uh, inspection citation citations details uh, from the reports uh, where it was filtered again uh, based uh, on the company uh, of uh, one of the manufacturer and regarding devices and what kind of comments uh, were addressed uh, to that manufacturer of medical device and uh, if they were also maybe in relation to a uh, clinical trial, uh, which could be also in uh, uh, for future uh, in interest, how to avoid such kind of uh, issues or comments uh, or findings from the inspections to learn from them from the past. And now if I will go to image array, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, shared information on the pages. So uh, the UK uh, regulatory agency uh, shared uh, quite routinely the GCP inspection metrics report. Uh, the last available version is uh, for the metrics period from April 18 to March 19 was issued in February 2021. So hopefully the next report will be issued also soon. And uh, this report uh, uh, summarizes 91 performed GCP inspections by, <clears throat> pardon, MHRA GCP inspectorate. where 12 of them were performed at non-commercial organizations, eight at commercial sponsors, 11 at CROs, 19 at investigational sites, and also phase one units uh, were inspected uh, in seven cases. There are some overviews from the report itself, uh, which provide the information, for example, the red columns are regarding triggered inspections performed by MHRA, and these uh, triggered inspections uh, happened at the commercial sponsor, also at non-commercial sponsor or organization, and uh, also outside UK, uh, uh, meaning as part of the EMA inspection. And uh, in terms of commercial sponsors, uh, there were also some additional details provided, uh, quite detailed, uh, described in terms of also critical findings. Uh, I will go uh, into some examples uh, uh, in, uh, in a uh, few seconds. And uh, there was an overview that there were seven critical findings from four organizations. And uh, the similar overview is also uh, provided for inspections performed at clinical research organizations, CROs, where six critical findings were from four organizations. Uh, if uh, you will look uh, more deeply into the inspection metrics report, uh, the critical findings overview is a perfect lessons learned, I think, for also those who were not involved in these inspections, because it's so uh, uh, detailed in the way that uh, you can understand what was wrong and uh, keeping still the confidentiality. Then, for example, for the commercial sponsors, uh, there were critical findings issued regarding the pharmacovigilance system, uh, where uh, it was caused by late or delayed CSR reporting, which had uh, uh, subsequently the impact to issue and uh, release uh, the development safety update report. Uh, there was uh, repeatedly mentioned the record keeping and the essential documents, uh, both at the sponsor and the CRO side. Uh, there was also a critical finding regarding the clinical trial authorization uh, in the UK and also the protocol compliance or respectively protocol non-compliance uh, of, uh, of the investigational sites and also a GCP non-compliance uh, uh, in terms of CRO activities. So there were also some additional interesting facts in terms of eight critical findings in eight sponsors and uh, findings uh, were related to product vigilance and safety and efficacy which are of course crucial within the clinical trial and also in terms of a specific design, uh, meaning there were studies with those escalation studies. And there were also critical findings issued uh, regarding the IVR system, which was not set up uh, according to the protocol, which have been approved by MHRA and the ethics committees. 
Uh, then uh, again, you mentioned record keeping and the essential documents and trial master file. Um, there were uh, many uh, bullet points listed uh, why it was considered as a critical finding. Uh, for example, at the CRO side, because uh, afterwards it was really hard to reconstruct uh, the study conduct if there was uh, such a big lack of documents uh, or misplaced documents, not available documents or not finalized. So uh, therefore, it's uh, as I mentioned, it's a really good uh, lessons learned in terms of uh, operational activities. Uh, if you are either working on the sponsor side or CRO side, also on investigational side, it's a good source of information how to avoid such kind of uh, findings uh, to follow the instructions and to keep the essential documents, uh, especially those which are listed uh, in ICAGCP uh, in, uh, according to al C principles. And what are the impacts of inspections? Of course, uh, the, uh, based on the inspection and based on the uh, findings, uh, if, if they are especially critical, the regulatory authority uh, which are issued uh, to the inspectee may lead to administrative offenses or to fines or prohibition of activities or also to have a negative public awareness afterwards. And therefore, uh, what I would like to just to mention uh, to always remember when performing uh, and conducting or supervising the clinical trial uh, to be always ready, uh, meaning to uh, keep the inspection uh, readiness status since beginning. Uh, also to remember what is not documented didn't happen. Uh, in case any issues happening, which is quite normal, I would say, then these issues need to be solved immediately and should be also sorted out according to risk-based approach in case uh, not to uh, end up like uh, with uh, the EMA uh, inspection uh, findings overview, not to waste the time with minor findings and focus for the critical ones. Uh, the open communication is a perfect tool how to uh, keep the inspection readiness status all the time and also to solve the issues. So therefore, it's fully recommended to have an open communication and trust uh, with all parties involved. And of course, to keep the trial oversight. Uh, every person who is involved in clinical trial, in performing the clinical trial, should have uh, his or her oversight about uh, assigned activities and tasks which should be, of course, documented. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye-bye.